So uh, thanks for giving the opportunity to talk with you about our research on the organization and evolution of uh, telomeres in Drosophila. And uh, I'd like to start with a question. So are they so different from human telomeres? And I hope at the end of this talk, uh, we might uh, be convinced that uh, they are not so different. So um, the uh, concept of uh, telomeres was first introduced by Mahler in 1940. So he was a drosophilist who was studying the consequences of irradiating uh, flies and uh, um, isolating uh, deleted chromosomes. So he uh, soon realized that he was never able to recover terminal deficiency. So chromosomes who had lost their terminal hands. So uh, he understood that this region is very important for uh, chromosomal stability, called them telomeres, uh, and was awarded no the Nobel Prize in 1946. So uh, some 60 years later, uh, uh, later uh, another Nobel Prize was awarded for uh, understanding how chromosomes are protected by telomeres and enzyme telomerase. So uh, chromosomes have to solve the uh, end replication problem, which is the uh, natural loss of uh, sequences at their end at each replication cycle. And uh, this is uh, achieved through uh, the enzyme telomerase, who has uh, repeats uh, copied by reverse transcription uh, from its RNA template, which is species specific. After uh, replication, the uh, telomere needs to be uh, processed by a set of enzymatic activities, and in the end, it is composed by arrays of uh, telomeric sequences, and uh, it terminates with a, a three prime overhang, which is typically a, a, a G-rich filament, and uh, um, the uh, telomeric repeats uh, are recognized and bound by specific set of double-stranded DNA binding proteins uh, who help recruit uh, single-strand DNA binding proteins. So in this condition, this is a capped telomere, and uh, in this way, it is not recognized as a double-strand break, and uh, so uh, this, uh, um, this is not recognized as damage, and uh, it inhibits uh, the action of uh, DNA repair enzymes. It will be an excellent substrate. So in this way, um, it is prevented from pushing to uh, other chromosomes and to uh, avoid genomic rearrangements. Um, the uh, cap telomere inhibits the activation of cell cycle checkpoint and uh, therefore uh, prevents the uh, uh, cell cycle arrest and uh, um, regulates the access of telomerase and uh, telomere elongation. So how this is achieved in various organisms? So here there are the uh, telomere capping complexes in various organisms. So uh, our telomeres are protected by sheltering, which uh, are a complex of six products proteins who uh, specifically recognize the TTA GGG repeats of mammalian telomeres. So um, also important for uh, chromosome uh, maintenance is the CST complex formed by the STN1, TEN1, and CTC1, uh, which is different from sheltering because uh, uh, it uh, binds uh, uh, DNA, telomeric DNA, in a sequence independent fashion, and uh, it's not only specific for telomeres, but it also has other function within the cell. So keep in mind these factors, TRF2 and TRF1, and in POMBI, in fish and yeast, there is a similar complex, a similar sheltering complex, so even if the, um, uh, sequence, the primary sequence of these proteins is not uh, strictly conserved, what is conserved is a general architecture. Uh, while budding yeast uh, lost sheltering and has a complex formed by RAP1, RIF1, and RIF2 double strand binding proteins, while the CST complex is uh, the main capping complex uh, in budding yeast. So why did budding yeast lose sheltering components? Uh, because uh, in, the, in, uh, in budding yeast there is a, um, a high variation of the terminal sequences in the sense that while uh, most eukaryotes have, short, have um, simple repeats at their hand generated by telomerase, in budding <coughs> yeast there is a, a high variation with within the saccharomycotina clade of yeast uh, of the uh, telomeric sequences. So they needed a more flexible way to protect their telomeres. So speaking about differences, uh, let's go to Drosophila. 
which is a quite peculiar system because in this species telomerase has been lost and uh, as a consequence the uh, chromosomes do not terminate with specific sequences but they are dynamic um, and uh, in this species uh, a different mechanism for telomere maintenance was developed which is based on the retrotransposition of uh, specific retro elements at chromosome hands these are ATA, TARE and TART and these um, re retrotransposons use a mechanism that is not very different from uh, the one used by telomerase because while telomerase adds the uh, repeats onto the end coping by reverse transcription basing on its uh, RNA template retrotransposon uh, use their reverse transcriptase to copy sequences onto the end from a poly A uh, template so, uh, the, um, uh, so even if drosophila has not a specific sequence at the end so the telomeres are composed of various arrays of these ETA, TART and TARE uh, retrotransposons uh, we like study capping in drosophila because it does not depend on sequence so it was established that uh, this was a Mahler experiment on terminal deficiency it was widely established that um, if you radiate uh, females that carry a mutation uh, that slows down the um, recognition of uh, DNA breaks uh, it is possible to recover telomeres who completely lost their uh, telomeric sequence at their hand. Uh, and uh, this chromosome can be uh, propagated in a well-type background. They require a uh, functional telomere and can be maintained without the presence of ATA and TART uh, sequences. So uh, these uh, chromosomes behave exactly like uh, uh, normal chromosome and uh, acquire a functional telomere. So it was interesting to uh, understand how is capping, uh, um, uh, sequence independent <coughs> capping achieved in drosophila. And to, uh, so we started looking for the proteins involved in uh, this uh, form of capping. And to, do, to search these proteins, we use a genetic approach uh, based on the prediction that uh, mutation in genes that are important for uh, telomere pro protection should uh, induce a, a telomere instability phenotype that is telomeric fusion. And for this reason, we uh, analyze a collection of 1,800 uh, late lethals whose uh, development until uh, late larval stage is supported by the uh, maternal contribution. So it's possible to analyze the uh, status of mitotic chromosome from um, uh, squashes of uh, larval neuroblast. So this, um, after the screening, we identified nine new genes which are important for telomere protection. And uh, here are some examples of the phenotype that we observed. On the left here are the uh, represented the uh, well-type karyotypes of male and female. And here several examples of telomeric fusion which involved uh, two chromosome, uh, formation of ring chromosome. And in the worst scenario, we have that uh, the the entire complement is fused to form uh, multicentric chromosomes that resemble like little train of chromosome. And for this reason, we decided to call the first gene we isolated the trenino, <coughs> and the second one was called uh, pendolino. And so we named all these uh, the genes we found after the names of uh, Italian trains, which are also names of painters. So in Drosophila, you can really do whatever you like with, with the names of the genes. So this is the result of our uh, screening. And in this table, I uh, reported all the genes that are important for telomere maintenance uh, in, uh, in Drosophila. And uh, these are the ones that came out from our screening. You can see that there are um, several uh, activities uh, important for telomere capping. Uh, some of them are extremely conserved, like the ATM kinase involved in uh, cell cycle checkpoint. Uh, there, is, uh, two, there are two ubiquitin conjugating enzymes, uh, one transcription factor, the uh, MRN, uh, complex involved in DNA damage repair, but uh, four genes, uh, Caravaggio, Modigliani, Verrocchio, and Hip Hop, do not have homologs in other organisms, so they are completely novel proteins. And these are the ones uh, that I'm going to uh, talk about. So um, 
mutation in uh, Caravaggio, Modigliani and Verrocchio uh, uh, induce a severe uh, telomer dysfunction phenotype with five telomeric fusion per cell. And uh, we uh, demonstrated that these three proteins form a complex that we decided to call terminin because it binds the uh, terminal uh, part of the chromosome. And this complex formed by these proteins uh, localizes and function exclusively at telomeres. So uh, in this, uh, uh, here you can see uh, HOP immunolocalization on mitotic chromosome. You can see that HOP protein is uh, enriched at, the, uh, mitotic, uh, at all mitotic telomeres and also at polythene telomeres. It's important to uh, note that uh, the binding of HOP at telomeric sequences does not depend on sequence. In fact, in this experiment, we uh, prepared salivary uh, gland uh, po uh, polythene chromosome from flies who are heterozygous for a terminally deleted <coughs> chromosome. So it's a X chromosome which completely lacks the uh, ATA and TART sequences. And here you can see the wild type the wild type chromosome and the shorter one, just a, just a box to eat. And the hope uh, correctly localized to both chromosome and also on mitotic, uh, on mitotic telomere. So binding of hope is sequence independent. Um, it, uh, we uh, built flies that carry a GFP ducted version of the other proteins, Modigliani and Verrocchio, as well as HOP, and study the distribution in vivo in nuclei from uh, salivary uh, glands. Uh, and so here you can see that uh, uh, these three proteins form six bright fluorescent spots, which correspond to uh, the telomeres of polythene chromosome. And uh, if we uh, do uh, immunofluorescence of fixed material, we can see that the signal of MOI and VER exact co-localized with HOP. So these three proteins are all enriched at telomeres and only at telomeres. The, this protein forms a complex, so it's possible to uh, immunoprecipitate this complex formed by HOP, VER, and MOI for, uh, from, uh, from drosophila cells, from uh, various tissues, and also if you express these proteins in an heterologous system like uh, mammalian cells, it's possible to isolate this complex. And here uh, are uh, shown uh, direct interaction between these proteins uh, done with uh, proteins purified from bacteria. So um, we uh, studied the distribution of these proteins in, diver in different uh, mutant backgrounds uh, and uh, to derive a model for how these proteins are uh, recruited at telomeres. So uh, now we know that HOP protein can uh, recognize the telomere uh, depending on the mRNA complex and uh, with two pathways that uh, involve the ATM and ITR kinase. So HOP is the first protein to recognize the telomere. Then it recruits VER and MOI, uh, who are mutually dependent for their uh, localization at telomere. So uh, as I said before, these proteins have no human homolog, and, it's, and based on their, uh, on their structure, it's difficult to understand what might be their action at telomere. So we started to study in more detail their structure and their function. So um, Verrocchio uh, has a, a no-befold domain, uh, which is oligonucleotide, um, oligosaccharide DNA binding domain, which is uh, capable of binding single-stranded DNA in a sequence independent fashion. And it's the same that is um, very structurally similar to the uh, OBIFOL domain found in STN1, which is a component of uh, important capping complex in uh, binding yeast and RPA2 replication protein 2. So uh, outside of the obifold domain, Verrocchio has no uh, sequence uh, similarity to other known proteins. Uh, here we derived the model the, uh, which nicely can be superimposed on a model of RPA2 replication protein A bound to single-stranded DNA. So there is this uh, side of the protein, this part of the protein which form a cleft in which uh, interacts with single-stranded DNA. And there are four residues who are important for connection with uh, single-stranded DNA. So in order to study how uh, the, to study the function of, of vero default domain, we generated some mutants in which we introduce a specific mutation within the critical obifold residues. 
Furthermore, if we look at the um, Bear model, uh, there is uh, this C-terminal alpha helix, uh, which is, uh, was kind of interesting to us because many uh, telomere binding proteins like uh, um, uh, ST1 and CDC13 have this uh, uh, terminal helix which, essential, which is essential for function. So we generated a mutant, a deletion mutant in which we removed the C-terminal helix. Uh, so we analyzed the function of these proteins in vivo. Um, we purified from bacteria and tested for their uh, functionality, so for their ability to bind the other terminal components. And then uh, we, we um, uh, well type uh, where protein is capable of self-interaction, another feature that is commonly found in uh, telomeric proteins. And uh, when we express the uh, deleted, the C-terminal de deleted uh, protein, this protein is no longer able to bind uh, to form multimers. So this helix is important for uh, multimerization. So we studied uh, this, the uses this protein to uh, perform in vitro binding assay on single-stranded DNA. And the prediction is that uh, since uh, the, the um, binding is sequence independent, uh, is sequence independent, we used several probes of different length and uh, sequence. And uh, here I can show you the uh, result with the 18 uh, nucleotide uh, probe. And you can see that the rocky well type purified from bacteria can um, form nucleoprotein complexes with, um, with single-stranded DNA, which is competed efficiently when we add um, cold single-strand DNA, but not when we add double-strand DNA. So the binding is specific for single-strand. Then we analyzed how is the behavior of our mutants. So we use the obifold mutants and the C-terminal delete mutant, and neither, none of them is able of binding DNA, single-stranded DNA. So then we uh, went on studying the, um, uh, the function of these mutants in vivo, and we generated flies that only express, the, in which the only ver protein is, the GFP, is a GFP target version, either the wild type or the uh, mutant. Here you can see that the obifold mutant, who is no longer able to bind the single strand DNA, anyway correctly localizes a telomeres, but is not capable of protecting them from fusion. So um, uh, single strand uh, binding activity is important for capping, but not for recruitment. And uh, the uh, C-terminally deleted uh, mutant is no longer able to uh, localize a telomere. Therefore, we concluded that uh, single strand binding activity is essential for protection, but for, dispensable for uh, uh, recruitment of telomeres, and this is in agreement with the fact that VER is uh, recruited by the HOP and MOI proteins. And uh, um, oligomerization is important both for single-stranded DNA binding and for localization of telomeres. Uh, then we were interested in understanding uh, more about MOI function, but uh, uh, it has been a little bit difficult because this protein has no, completely no uh, structural motif that may give us some hint of what The, its function might be. So we did uh, uh, analysis of uh, um, elements of secondary structure uh, and the exposure of residues, and we um, built uh, some deletions in order to map the uh, domain responsible for the interaction with VER, uh, with, with HOP, and for uh, eventually for binding uh, DNA. So uh, here we can see that uh, there is a small, a small region uh, uh, which includes 22 amino acids, which is, which is important for binding, which is uh, sufficient for binding to their protein. So we analyze what's inside this uh, region. And there are three uh, amino acids who are nicely exposed on the surface, which are invariably conserved across all the Drosophila species. And, uh, other six residues which are um, exposed on the surface. So we introduced this mutation in, uh, pep in, uh, in pep we generated mutant peptides and compare uh, their, uh, their ability to bind their protein. And here you can see that the two mutant peptides are completely, uh, completely lost the ability to bind their. And uh, here uh, uh, something 
interesting is this uh, uh, tyrosine, which is, uh, if, so we built a model of, uh, of uh, Modigliani in which we included um, some features like uh, the DNA binding, uh, the, the, um, the verb binding domain, uh, the region responsible for interaction with HOP, and the region which is uh, responsible for self-interaction. And here you can see this uh, tyrosine is uh, particularly exposed, so it's a good candidate for being responsible of, for recognition of error. And uh, um, in vivo, when you express uh, a deletion of Modigliani that lacks uh, the domain of, inter of interaction with Verrocchio, as expected, it completely removes Verrocchio from telomeres. So if we look at what's the, uh, the current model for uh, uh, sheltering protection of uh, human telomeres, uh, uh, there are these proteins who are TRF2, TRF1 uh, that bind the double-stranded uh, DNA and then there is a bridge uh, formed by the TIN2 and TPP1 protein who recruits POT1 uh, that is the single-stranded binding protein. So um, something similar happens in Drosophila. So there is um, double-stranded binding protein, HOP and HIP-HOP, that recruit MOI protein that recruits VER on single-stranded DNA. So the model looks quite uh, similar, and recently it was developed this uh, idea of how uh, the, uh, these proteins are recruited at human telomeres. So if you express a deletion of TPP1 who lost the ability to bind POT1, this complex is completely removed from from single-stranded DNA. And something similar, we think it's the, the case for Dosophila. So when you have a deletion mutant of MOI, the, uh, the single-stranded DNA cannot be recognized by single-stranded binding proteins. No one of these proteins are concerned. No one of these proteins is concerned, no. Uh, so, uh, to summarize all our ideas on uh, of Drosophila telomer, we know that there are several proteins essential for uh, telomer maintenance uh, that are uh, located at telomeres, like the MRN complex, heterochromatin protein 1, and many others. But these proteins has, have also other functions in the cell. So they are not only localized at telomeres. While uh, the uh, terminin complex formed by HOP, MOI, and VER is specifically localized at telomeres. It's associated throughout the cell cycle and appears to function only at telomeres. So its feature is that it binds telomeres in a sequence independent fashion. So uh, we can draw a few conclusions on uh, terminin function and evolution, and we think that terminin is functionally analogous to sheltering, the complex found in mammalian uh, chromosome. And uh, that uh, uh, terminin <coughs> evolved after telomeres, telomeres lost in drosophila to bind telomeres in a sequence independent manner. And uh, in this species, telomeres was lost because uh, a different mechanism evolved that is based on transposable elements. Actually, this uh, affinity of transposable elements or retrotransposons for uh, uh, terminal uh, DNA is not only found in Drosophila. In fact, there are so many examples uh, in, uh, in the silkworm, in uh, protozoan, <coughs> in, uh, in fungi. And also at mammalian telomeres, some retrotransposons of line one uh, type are, um, are capable of going to telomeres with a mechanism that is not different from a uh, telomerase mechanism. So uh, the, the, the phenomenon is quite general and it can suggest how happened in evolution that at some point uh, Drosophila took such a different path. Actually, if we look at uh, um, various orders of insect uh, and the distribution of the telomeric repeats, so at some point they, this was lost in Drosophila, Actually, the loss of uh, telomeric sequence happened many times uh, in uh, the insect evolution. Uh, and uh, some species uh, are uh, lost, uh, lost telomerase and changed, uh, some changed also the, uh, the type of repeat. And an interesting case that um, we um, uh, like to mention is this, uh, uh, the case of the silkworm, which uh, gives like a snapshot of what might have happened in the course of evolution. In the silkworm, what happens is that you still have telomeric repeats, but telomerase is not active, uh, it's suppressed. The gene is there, but it doesn't work. And uh, so uh, some 
transposons started to target telomeres. So in the long run, also the silkworm might lose uh, its um, telomeric repeats and get a similar uh, fate as Drosophila. We won't be here to know, but this is something that might uh, happen. So um, we, can, uh, we can make a few prediction uh, based on our hypothesis on terminal evolution. Since terminal proteins evolved to bind telomeres in a sequence independent fashion, uh, it is expected they are not uh, found in yeast or mammals. And uh, uh, for the same reason that budding yeast lost the sheltering components, it is expected that these proteins uh, must not be found in Drosophila. And, and uh, um, since these proteins evolved uh, after telomerase lost, it is expected that terminal proteins must be fast evolving. And uh, uh, so we analyzed, to, prove, to test this hypothesis, we analyzed the distribution of non-synonymous substitutions per non-synonymous sites on uh, the protein uh, Ver, Op, and Moi in uh, various Drosophilids species in order to analyze how these proteins evolve respect to other, pro other, termini pro other telomer protein, which is HP1, which instead is a conserved protein, and of course a control, which is ribosomal protein, which is not uh, expected to change. And here you can see that the rate of, the, the, the rate of mutation, so that the, uh, the number of non-synonymous substitution is strikingly high for both Ver, Hop, and Moi, while not for HP1. And uh, so this protein really are fast evolving, are encoded by fast evolving genes. So if we look at the conservation of uh, telomeric proteins in, mamma in mammals, in humans, and in Drosophila, we can see that uh, in green, so these are all proteins important for uh, telomeric maintenance, in green are the ones that are conserved in Drosophila. And here you can see that all proteins are conserved except the terminal proteins. And for Drosophila, all the proteins uh, which are uh, important for telomeric maintenance are conserved except the terminal proteins. So it appears that the, major di the principal difference between the human and drosophila telomeres is in the complexes that binds the end specifically, while all the other proteins are uh, conserved. So, in order to, um, so we, we started, so with this hypothesis, we thought, well, may, it may be that proteins who are, not, who are conserved might have a general role in telomere, in telomere maintenance that might be conserved in human. And so we started analyzing the non-terminal proteins, so proteins who, are, who do not act specifically a telomere. So the first one that I'm gonna talk about is, this, uh, is a protein who is closely related to one terminal component protein Modigliani, because uh, Modigliani is uh, uh, encoded by a peculiar uh, uh, locus because it's a bisistronic, so it produces an RNA who is capable of uh, encoding two different polypeptides. One is Modigliani, who is essential for telomere protection and sufficient, and the other one, DTL, who is a protein uh, that is very conserved, as a C-terminal domain that is very conserved, uh, and uh, it is uh, the trimethyl guanosine synthetase TGS1. So this protein uh, uh, catalyzes a reaction, on, um, a, um, a reaction that uh, forms the trimethyl guanosine cap on uh, many RNA uh, that are uh, synthesized by uh, RNA polymerase 2. So uh, all uh, products of RNA polymerase 2 have a monomethyl cap, a monomethyl guanosine cap, which is essential for their uh, function, for uh, um, their transport, for splicing, and uh, uh, some uh, RNA acquire a trimethyl guanosine cap, uh, and this reaction is catalyzed by TGS1. So who are the targets of TGS1? There are many uh, different targets, essential, which are the uh, small nuclear RNAs involved in splicing, small nuclear RNA, uh, small cahal bodies RNAs, some transplaced RNA, uh, HIV RNA is also TMG capped, and uh, remarkably telomerase RNA. Uh, and uh, in, uh, in yeast, it has been um, discovered that uh, TGS1 interacts genetically with uh, a component of the capping complex. So uh, we 
thought, well, maybe uh, TGS1 in Drosophila is not involved in telomer cutting, but, but might be involved in some other uh, process related to telomer metabolism. And so we asked why are these two proteins co-transcribed on the same mRNA? So uh, first of all, DTL uh, exists as two isoforms in Drosophila, a long form and a short form. And this is the same, uh, the, the same thing happens also in uh, mammalian cells where there are two isoforms. One is cytoplasmic, the other is uh, uh, nuclear. And uh, the same is uh, we also found in Drosophila. So um, Modigliani and DTL interact with each other. So these two proteins uh, that are co-transcribed are also uh, physically interacting to each other. And we've seen the uh, interaction both from, um, from in different tissues. These are uh, neuroblasts where you have really a tiny, tiny amount of modigliani that is still capable of binding DTL and also in uh, GST pull-down experiments on uh, drosophila cells that express DTL HA. So uh, these two proteins physically interact, but what is the relevance of this interaction? So we want to look at what's the function of TGS1 within the cell. So um, this is a complex series of, of events that uh, involve the maturation of uh, small nuclear RNA involved in splicing. Basically, the message is that uh, this uh, RNA is transcribed by RNA polymerase 2, acquires a monometyl cap, then is transported to the cytoplasm. In the cytoplasm, it binds uh, the SMN complex, uh, which is a complex uh, in which uh, the SMN protein, which is mutated in, uh, and uh, um, is uh, uh, essential for uh, um, spinal muscular atrophy disease. Um, this, this complex formed by RNA and SMN becomes substrate for TGS1, um, for TGS1 modification. So in this way, the RNA acquires the, the trimethyl cap and then is ready to go back in the nucleus where it localizes to cahal bodies and for further processing. So this reaction, uh, the trimethylation reaction, is uh, achieved uh, because, uh, through an interaction between TGS1 and SMN protein. So this is a, a, um, an important in interaction and uh, in some um, SMA patient uh, and there are some uh, mutation of SMN protein that disrupt the interaction with TGS1 and so the processing of uh, uh, small nuclear RNA is impaired. So we uh, wanted to know whether also in Drosophila this interaction between TGS1 and SMN is conserved. So um, we used uh, GFP tagged SMN and DTL ta and flag tag DTL, and we uh, can precipitate um, a complex from uh, Drosophila cells. So the interaction is important also in Drosophila, and uh, it um, opens the way to a new study of what might be TGS function also in uh, at the synapse where SM1 SMN is mostly important. If we look at the mechanism of, uh, uh, of the uh, metabolism of retrotransposons, here you can see that uh, the retrotransposons, the telomeric retrotransposons are transcribed, then the, uh, the transcript goes into the cytoplasm, then it gets, a, becomes, of course, uh, it's translated, and it becomes associated with uh, the uh, proteins, with the uh, GAG proteins goes back to the nucleus and is ready for being uh, uh, located at the, uh, the telomere. So um, we think that uh, this is the situation of, of Drosophila telomere with uh, terminin complex and uh, Modigliani uh, through interaction with TGS1 might recruit this uh, methyl transferase, its methyl transferase activity and probably be involved in some step of uh, retrotransposal metabolism. And in order to test this hypothesis, we are just uh, at the beginning of, the, of this study, but we analyzed how is regulated the expression of uh, telomeric transposons in, uh, in, uh, in Drosophila. So uh, going back to our first question, I hope uh, I uh, convinced you that uh, um, Drosophila telomeres, who look so weird in the first place, uh, actually um, are more similar to human telomeres that than uh, generally thought. They just use a different path for, uh, to solve the problem of uh, telomere capping uh, and uh, understanding what might be uh, um, uh, um, a different system might help us understanding also the uh, general rules. 
So um, I'd like to thank uh, all people in Maurizio Gatti's lab who uh, collaborated to this work, Laura Ciapponi, Gianni Cenci, other uh, former member of the lab, and our collaborators, Domenico Raimondo, uh, the groups led by Stefano Cacchione and uh, Isabella Saggio, uh, Mike Goldberg at Cornell University, Stefan Schaffner at Regina Elena, and Fabian Feguin. Thanks, thanks very much for your attention.